Now we are going to start with control and coordination. So what does control and coordination means actually? It means working of body, it means working of body in systematic manner, working of body in systematic manner. For example, if you take in food, if you eat food, your stomach should be uh, ready with the gastric juices in order to digest it. So that means, uh, because uh, that means that, like all the, as we know that all the activities of bodies are interrelated. So the, the, the systematic working, that means the, the coordination between the various organs of the body, that is actually a control and coordination. So there are two systems which help in control and coordination. One is the nervous system and other is the hormonal system. So these two systems actually help in the coordination of different organs of the body. So first we are going to start with the nervous system, we are going to start with the nervous system. So nervous system as, as it is a system obviously it is an organ system, so obviously it consists of organ, tissue and finally cell. So structural and functional unit, so structural and functional unit of nervous system is neuron is neuron and moreover we know that neuron is the uh, largest uh, or longest cell of the body, neuron is the longest, longest cell of the body. So first we are going to study about neuron that what actually or how actually neuron looks like. So neuron structure is divided into three parts that is the cell body, exon and dendrites. It consists of cell body, exon and dendrites. So how does it look like? See, it has a structure like this. Just look carefully how I am drawing is. It has a structure like this. This actually consists of this actually consists of a liquid that is the cytoplasm and the cytoplasm of neuron is being given a special name that is the neuroplasm. It has a nucleus also inside it, so let us say this is nucleus. It has a specific kind of nissel granules also, so let us draw like this. These red ones are nissel granules. So this is what is a cell body, this is what, what is a cell body, this is the cell body. Now it gives out branches in both the direction, we see that on the upper side it gives out small branches but they are highly branched, large number of branches, small small branches, highly, highly branched just like a branch of tree and these branches are called as dendrites, these branches are called as dendrites. And the cell body along with dendrites is being given a special name that is the cyton. We also call it as cyton. And on the lower side it gives out only one branch which is very elongated like this. And this branch is called as exon. This is called as exon and it tends into a nerve endings. These are the nerve endings. It extends into a nerve endings. So it is present like this. So uh, you what happen is the membrane that covers the neuron as we see that there is a continuous membrane that is forming a neuron. This membrane is called as neurolemma. This membrane is called as neurolemma. So this is what is a neuron. So I think you got it that this is cyton, these are dendrites and this is a axon. Ax that is the three parts of neuron. So this is the longest cell of a body that is the neuron or you can say a structural and functional unit of the nervous system. Now we have what have we have is we have actually neuron is of two types. Neuron is further of two types. One is medulated, other is non-medulated. This neuron is actually a non-medulated neuron. This what I have made for you is non-medulated neuron. Now what is the difference between the medulated and the non-medulated one? So uh, in the medulated one, this is non-medulated as I told you, in the medulated one there is a special covering present on the axon like this 
but this covering is not a continuous it is discontinuous as you can see that there are certain gaps where these membrane is membrane not uh, not a membrane sheath what we call it as sheath not sheath it is sheath s h e a t h this sheath is present and this sheath is being named as myelin sheath this is called as myelin sheath so in medullated neuron there is a this i'm making for medullated in medullated neuron there is a special sheath present on the exon that is the myelin sheath or a medullated sheath it is not continuous it is absent at certain places and the places where it is absent is called as nodes of renwire is called as nodes of renwire so this is what is a structure of medullated neuron so i think you got it that uh, and one more thing you know that there are special type of cells which are present in neurolemma which actually secrete this myelin sheet and those cells are present in neurolemma and they are microscopic cells actually called as shorn cells called as shorn cells you can just remember it by the name shorn michael so it is called as shorn cells so this is what is a neuron i think you got it again i'm just going to tell you again neuron is a structure and functional unit of nervous system and nervous system is one which help in the control and coordination so what does neuron actually consist of a cell body enclosing a nucleus neuroplasm nasal granules and on the upper side also it is giving branches but they are highly branched small branches highly branched lower side only one branch and it has a special membrane in case of medullated that is myelin sheath secreted by shorn cells but in non medullated it is just no myelin sheet is present and in in the medullated one the places where the sheet is absent is called as nodes of renwire right so this is what is a neuron now you know that uh, two like a neuron neuron just connect with each other forming the nerves so that means neuron neuron just connect like this is neuron 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 so they just connect to forming a nerves they can be they are connect, interconnected and they form a nerves so there are three kind of nerves actually one is sensory nerve other is motor and we have mixed nerve also sensory nerve actually carry message in this chapter we will be taking like uh, suppose uh, if somebody uh, if a uh, uh, needle pricks uh, your finger so that is not a message that it is being sending a we will not say that it is sending message from finger to brain we will instead of message uh, because message is being transformed in in form of electric signals and here we are going to term electric signals as impulse so we will write here sensory nerve is one which carry impulse from sense organ to brain what is sense organ sense organ is that where you can feel certain things motor nerve is one which brings impulse from back from brain to sensory organ and mix which can perform both the task it can be sensory also it can be motor also so we have mainly three kinds of nerves one is sensory motor and mix sensory is one like suppose if something pricks my finger so the nerve which is going to carry a message from here to brain is going to be a sensory nerve and suppose uh, something pricks me so the message the impulse which is being carried out as by sensory nerve and after reaching the brain brain will just analyze that what has happened that something has pricked your finger and you need to remove your finger so that answer is just brought by the motor nerve to the sensory organ and that nerve which brings the uh, response is actually a motor nerve and mixed one is that which can perform both the task so this is what we have sensory nerve motor nerve and mixed nerve and moreover you should know that uh, like as i told you that neuron 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 just unite to form nerves but two neurons are never interconnected there is certain space present between the neuron that means suppose if one neuron ends like this so this is the ending of one neuron the another neuron let's say starts from this point so it <coughs> starts this is the dendrites <coughs> suppose it starts from this point so there is always certain space between two neurons there is always certain space between two neurons and that space is called as synapse that is called as synapse so what is synapse we can say is it is junction between two neurons it is junction between two neurons or we can say that it is a space between the exon of one neuron and dendrite of another neuron we can also write it as space between exon of one neuron and dendrite of 
another neuron. So this is called as synapse. So it's clear that two neurons are never joined. There is certain space which always exists between them and it is around 20 Armstrong and uh, there is always certain space that is there is a synapse that is called as the junction between two neurons. This synapse is no, actually not vacant. It has a certain kind of fluid in it and that fluid is called as synaptic fluid or we can say it as synaptic cleft. We can call it as synaptic cleft also. So there is always certain fluid between the synapse that is the synaptic cleft is present in the synapse and two neurons are never joined with each other. Now the question comes that how the neuron takes the message, how new neurons take the message or which part of neuron just help in taking the message. So you should know that each neuron takes the message from dendrite, neuron is able to take the message from dendrites, it takes message or impulse from dendrite, it, uh, it travels along the length of neuron, let us say this is axon and to another neuron, let us say this is another neuron. So the axon is the one which is going to pass the message to the another neuron. So we can say that each neuron takes the message from dendrite and deliver through axon. It delivers through axon and it takes message through or impulse through dendrites. So that means the flow of message in neuron is unidirectional. The flow of message is unidirectional that means always in one direction. So that means the message may flow from uh, like uh, from uh, sense organ to brain or it may come from brain to the sense organ at a time only one thing can happen and so because for a one impulse I am talking about. So because each neuron takes the message from dendrite and delivered through axon and dendrite is present only at one end. So that means it is like if I talk of this neuron, so if I say that can it take the message from this side, yes you will say that yes it can take the message from its side, this side because it has dendrite on this side. So if, if I ask you that can it, can it take the message from the lower side, so you will say no it, it can't take the message from lower side because it does not possess any dendrites and dendrites are the one which actually help in taking up the message. So that means the flow of uh, neuron, the uh, flow of the impulse in neuron is unidirectional that is because dendrite is present only at the one end. Now the question is this that what is the difference between the medulated or the non-medulated or if I ask you that out of it which one is the, uh, is the efficient one. So what actually is there in medulated or non-medulated? In medulated it is like this there is a covering which is present like this. Only this difference is there and in non-medulated it is just a neurolemma, that is it. So what happened as I told you that impulse passes in the form of electric signals, it is not a letter kind of thing that a letter is folded in an envelope and is just moving from one person to another, it is not like that. The message in our body flows in, an, in the form of electric impulse that is the electric signal that is the electric impulse. So electric in modulated one, the electric impulse passes from one node of line wire to another, one to another. So you can say the message flow in modulated occur in a jumping manner. As you can say this electric impulse that means the flow of I we say is just only at the nodes of ring wire but in non-modulated it travels along the whole length. So that means in which of the two the message is going to travel faster. So obviously it is going to travel faster in the modulated one because here it is going to travel in a jumping manner that is from one node of ring wire to another but here it is going to travel along the whole length and this type of conduction in modulated one is term is being given a special name that is saltatory conduction that is saltatory conduction that is the flow of message in the form of jumping manner in, uh, in case of modulated one is in so modulated neuron is an efficient one because here the impulse pass uh, in a faster rate because uh, the conduction is actually a saltatory that is the uh, impulse passes from in a jumping manner that is from one node of ring wire to the another. So this is what is a basic introduction about control and coordination. I think you got it, you know much about neuron now that what is the actual structure, what are nerves, how it is going to take a message from which path it is going to take and from where it is going to deliver, how two neurons are aligned with each other, what is there in between two neurons.
you also know that uh, this thing the modulated and difference between the modulated and the non modulated one and also you know that saltatory conduction that is the jumping manner uh, the electric flow of impulse in the jumping manner and also you know that the flow of message is a unidirectional so this is the basic introduction about control and coordination now we are going to start up another topic so just try to take draw a new, uh, neuron first and try to make make yourself familiar with the neuron characteristics which we did now right so just um, practice it then we are, then take up the next talk